gentlemen of regroup man i love you i love uh what god's doing in your life i love hearing the stories even even reminiscing with some of you who've been here three or four years and uh, remembering that small group of four that started and uh if everybody showed and one day we'd be over 40 of us here on this call with some 33 here today. Um, I, I'm just, I'm just committed to walk with you uh, in this journey of uh, recovery and becoming the man God wants you to be and, uh, and honored to be here and sharing with you today. This is an interesting little discussion. Uh, yesterday morning in my quiet time with the Lord, I'm, um, I'm working through the New Testament and I, uh, yesterday I was in Philippians. And uh, I'm just, you know, I mean, I, I only the Lord would know how many times I've read through the Bible, let alone read Philippians. It's a wonderful book. And, uh, and uh, a verse jumped out to me. And, uh, and it's in its chapter four of Philippians, which I read yesterday, but Colossians one this morning. And, uh, and, it, and it just, your gentleness should be evident to all the Lord is near. And, and it just kind of rattled around my brain that gentleness needs to be evident to all people. And in, in the last week, since I've been back counseling, you know, a, a week and a couple of days, uh, I see all kinds of men I'm trying to help. And the last thing would be that their wife calls them gentle. They're not safe. They're reactionary. They're defensive. They're angry. They're spiteful. Sometimes they're harsh. And, and, and I was thinking, wow, uh, your gentleness needs to be evident to all because it says the Lord is near. Now, we're going we're gonna to come back to that. Uh, and I'm going to, um, you know, put the, uh, um, put the talk in the chat here uh, as soon as I'm, I'm, I'm able here. I'll get it sent to everyone. Uh, so yeah, it'll, uh, oh, there it is. There it is. So the question is, are you a gentle man? Are you a gentle man? And, and, uh, I'm going to do a study. I, I call it a biblical theology. When you do a biblical theology, you're kind of doing a, what does the Bible say about gentleness? What, what are the key components of general uh, gentleness that the Bible talks about? And, uh, and so, I want to uh, I want to walk with you through uh, this question. Are you a gentleman? Um, and you can see there, Philippians chapter four, uh, verse five, the uh, the verse that kind of rocked me. Let your gentleness be evident to all. That means everybody sees that you are gentle. The Lord is near. Now I'll come back and take that apart. But I'll have to tell you that yesterday in my devotions, this is what prompted me to do this. And so I'm going to walk through here, first of all, the perspective of gentleness, which is basically a definition. It's the quality of being kind, tender, and mild-mannered. It's the quality of being calm, kind, and soft. It's a quality of graciousness. Another dictionary said it's a quality of being kind, quiet, careful, and uh, mild-mannered. And of course, that's mixing between the nature of kindness and also the, the soft approach to people. Um, the quality of one was listing what was the opposite, the, the quality of not being rough, harsh, violent, severe, or strong. It, it's as acting in a careful and tender matter, manner. It's kind, considerate, and tender in disposition. Gentleness, kindness soft approach, the opposite being harsh, rough, severe, unkind. Got the picture. There's a lot of passages here, uh, mostly from the New Testament. I have, I think, uh, one about uh, a gentle answer that turns away wrath uh, from Proverbs. But, um, but let's, let's look at these. As I said, the one that stirred me yesterday was, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. It's seen by all. It's clear. It's noticeable. Your gentleness is something people will see. <laughs> and then it says the Lord is near. Do you realize there's three ways to take the Lord is near? When you are gentle, the Lord is near. That's one thing. Okay, so that means when I'm gentle, 
Jesus is around because the Lord's near when I'm gentle. I like that part. Another way to look at it, um, the Lord is near, kind of like a warning. You better be gentle because the Lord is near and he can kind of tune you up if needed. Another one is the Lord's coming is near. You know, because we hear that in scripture lots. The Lord is near. I mean, his coming is soon. And gentleness confirms that you're a follower of Jesus. I guess the one that, that really hit me in light of uh, just coming back to counseling the last 10 days and running into many situations where there's difficult interaction between husband and wife, men who were struggling with addiction, and they are not gentle. They are harsh. They are demanding. They are pushy. They are controlling. They are defensive. They are reactive. They are a lot of things. And let your gentleness be evident to all those of you married, I would say, especially your wife. Notice Galatians now. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, which is patience, kindness, goodness, faithful, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things as these, there's no law. Like the, You're going to get in trouble for being faithful. You're going to get in trouble for being peaceful. You're going to get in trouble for being patient. You're going to get in trouble for being self-controlled. No, no, no. There's no law against any of these nine. Matter of fact, these are all characteristics that are affirmed by all. What a loving man. Oh, you're going to jail for being loving. No, 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 no. You see, see, but it's, it's, it's beautiful. Gentleness is one of the nine fruit of the spirit. Fruit is the outworking of the spirit. If Christ is in you, he is the vine, we are the branches, and these characteristics are the fruit that pop off our life. And it's clearly one of the outcomes of the spirit-filled life, gentleness. And the opposite of gentleness is clearly contrary to God's plan because the fruit or the outworking, the product of the Holy Spirit in you includes gentleness. So the greater God is working in you, there's going to be more and more times where gentleness explains who you are. Gentleness defines who you are. Gentleness is displayed as part of the spirit-led life, the fruit of the spirit. In Colossians 3, we read this. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, that's all of us here, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Highlighted again as one of the key characteristics of God's chosen people. We put on gentleness like we put on a coat on ourselves. <clears throat> we put it on. I, I put on this, um, this uh, pullover windbreaker thing. I, I, I put it on this morning. I, I pulled my head through and put my arms through. I put it on today. It covers me. And you're to put on gentleness like you clothe yourself with a coat. You decide today, I will be gentle. I'm going to put this garment on. We wear it. It's beautiful, caring treatment of others. And if you just notice these characteristics, all five of these have to do with incredible treatment of people. Clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Wow, how about, how about those being the characteristics of a great husband and father? Those are amazing. When, when you operate with those five alone, you're going to be a transformed man. But it says put on these things, like you put on your clothes in the morning. Decide today that I will be gentle and that anything that is opposite of gentleness is not God's plan, not the fruit of the spirit, not the sign that you're God's chosen people. Let's keep going. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. But you, man of God, that's all you guys in regroup. You're trusting God to work in you. He makes you a man of God by your surrender to him and also your standing in Christ. Free from all this, if you look at 1 Timothy 6, it talks about all kinds of dark things and, and, and before this. Flee from all these kind of things that are contrary to what God would want. So you, man of God, flee all this stuff, but pursue these things. Pursue these things, man of God. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. As an aspiring man of God, you are to pursue a clearly different lifestyle. Pursue this. Don't do that anymore. Do something new. And here's part of what's new. 
righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance. And, you know, amongst these things here, we often don't think that gentleness would be in this mix. Yeah, righteous and godliness and really loving others. Okay, I get those. Those are talked about a lot. But again, gentleness sneaks on this list as what it looks like to be a man of God, just like as part of God's chosen people. Gentleness is there. It's there again here. It's listed as one of the target characteristics. In 1 Peter chapter 3, it says this, but in your hearts, revere Christ as your Lord. That means put God first. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. Why do you follow Jesus? What, what's the hope about Jesus all about? Um, but when you respond to people and might even get into debates or arguments about God, faith, world religions, who knows what, when you give an answer to everyone who asks you, give it in a way that is clearly different. When you respond to people, you speak with gentleness and respect. You keep a clear conscience that how you talk to them, you'll never feel bad about how you speak to them. So that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ, they'll be ashamed when they slander you. It's very, it's very interesting because, because you got to understand that gentleness is even how we approach people who don't even know the Lord. N not just one another in the faith and our families and our spouse, but even people outside. We interact with people about our faith always in a gentle and respectful way. And when you're gentle, you are Jesus. Proverbs, one of the ones I include from the Old Testament, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. In times of, ten in times of tension, look what gentleness does. It turns away wrath. It calms things down. Notice that the opposite of gentleness is harshness. That couldn't be any clearer. Gentle answer does this. A harsh response does that opposite your gentle approach will calm things down for years i've made this my practice you know because obviously uh doing lots of mediation lots of hard counseling situations sometimes doing mediation between people uh, in churches where there's business guys who are at odds over financial things and they're both members of the church and and uh and the more upset and angry somebody gets in my presence, especially when it's aimed at me. So they're getting amped up, they're getting louder, and they're getting more frustrated, and they're going like this. The more my disposition drops, the more I will slow down. I will be quieter. I will calm down. Why? Well, first of all, I need to put on gentleness. And by the way, by nature, if you cut me open, my characteristics are impatient, judgmental, and critical. I likely wouldn't be a great candidate for gentleness. I need to ask Jesus to help me be gentle. No ifs, ands, or buts. That being said, I have learned 20, 30 years of doing this now that when people escalate, curry drops quieter and quieter and quieter because nothing, nothing ever gets accomplished. When I come back with them like that, when I go like that, nothing ever good comes out of that. Can you not get it? A soft answer calms it down. But sometimes a, a man that struggles with addiction, his emotions run all over him. He barks at his wife, he complains, he blames, he criticizes. Uh, he does the cold shoulder. He's got all kinds of negative reactions that, if, yeah, remember, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. He's right here. He's right beside me. He said, uh, Dave, gentle, gentle. Dave, 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 gentle. Saying the same to you. This is a beautiful passage. And uh, matter of fact, uh, I, I, got a, I got a book I want to show you. Uh, Jesus in Matthew chapter 11 kind of describes who he is. Come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened. That's sometimes you through the struggle with the addiction. You're weary and you're burdened of this battle. He says, and I'll give you rest. 
uh, take my yoke on you and learn from me. For I am, Jesus describes his heart right now. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, which is my yoke. What I'm asking you to do is suitable. Easy meaning suitable. It works with you. And my burden is one that I help you carry. It is light. But the beautiful phrase is, I am gentle and lowly in heart. Jesus describes his heart here. It's a gentle heart. Just in January, I read this book. Gentle and lowly, the heart of Christ for sinners and sufferers. It's an unbelievable book. Um, I'm going to come back to it and, and pull stuff out of it to, to try to teach you guys what I learned. But when I come from a very legalistic background that is just do this, don't do that, you know, and there's not enough grace. I got to serve Jesus. I got to almost earn my way to heaven with a real strict legalistic background. This book blew me away because when I mess up, it says that Jesus comes to me with greater abandon. What? I, I, when I screw up, I go, oh, well, there you go again, Curry, for crying out loud. How many times I got it? That's what I pictured because I'm not gracious by nature. I'm not gentle by nature. I'm, I'm certainly not humble by nature. And, and, and when it says he's gentle and lowly of heart, he has a desire to help us. He comes hard on us when we're struggling. And I'm, I'm telling you, Jesus describes his own heart as gentle. The Lord pursues you with a gentleness. You don't have to, never have to fear coming to the Lord when you're weary and burdened. Because he says, hey, right on. Come over here. Come on. I got you. Let's work this. Let's work this recovery together. Notice here in Ephesians chapter 4, 1 to 3, as a prisoner for the Lord then, and he actually was in jail, uh, Paul said this, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you've received. Be completely humble and gentle. Okay, so you're going to live this life. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And there's about six different characteristics there. But it says, be completely humble and gentle. The transformed Christ's life, the life worthy of the calling, includes gentleness. Notice it says, be completely humble and gentle. Completely gentle. Not sometimes or a little bit. Be a little bit gentle. Be a little more gentle. But Dave, settle down. Dave, sometimes you know you're not quite gentle. Be, be, be gentle a little more often, Dave. No, no, completely. Gentleness is listed as one of the clear signs of a life worthy of Jesus, or worthy, a worthy life of Jesus, rather. And it's not worthy because of a gentleness. It's that a life that is following Jesus will more and more characteristically have this gentleness. In Timothy, now we're going to look at characteristics of an elder, a leader. Notice that an overseer is going to be a lot of characteristics. Above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle. Not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see to it that his children obey him. And uh, he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. The characteristics of an elder, a leader in the church, cites gentleness. Notice the opposite of gentleness here is violence, violent, harshness, reaction, hateful. And, and how you live and interact with people truly matters to God, because if you're going to be a leader, the way you approach even people in difficult times is you're going to do it gently. You're going to do it gently. You restore them gently, it says in Galatians. If a, if a, if a brother is overcome by some sin, you who are spiritual should restore them gently. Um, Titus here, chapter 3, verse 1. Remind the people. Now, remember, Paul was the leader in the church of Ephesus. So he's, he's, he's speaking to a large church pastor. This was a large community of believers there in Ephesus. And, and he says, Titus, um, I, I need you to call people to this. Remind the people, Titus, to be subject to the rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do what is good, 
to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and always to be gentle toward everyone. And always be gentle towards everyone. Wow. Always gentle, no excuses. Be gentle to everyone, no exceptions. When he calls Titus as the pastor of this church to, listen, steer people this way, steer people this way, respect the government, obey, you know, obedient, do whatever's good, don't slander, be peaceable, consider it, get along, and always be gentle to everyone. Well, what, what a challenge to have that pastor call people to always be gentle to everyone. It's clearly a priority. And then specifically within the home, we got this passage in 1 Peter. And uh, in the same way, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, with great gentleness and tact, uh, and, and with an intelligent regard for the marital relationship. As someone with, uh, who is physically weaker, you know, since she's a woman, you should show her honor and respect as a fellow uh, heir of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered. One translation, and I actually, I, I looked to try to find the exact translation. I couldn't find it, but treat your wife with gentleness or, or, and respect or else your prayers will be hindered. In other words, if you're not treating your wife with gentleness, your prayers are going to be hindered. It's kind of like this is the picture. God's covering his ears. You're treating your wife poorly and he's going, can't hear you, can't hear you, la, 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 can't hear you, can't hear you. And it's because you're trying to pray, but he sees you're treating your wife with disrespect and not in a gentle manner. You're treating her harsh or cruel or whatever. And your prayers are hindered. He's not going to listen. And, and, you, and then you start praying, God, I, I got a bit of a problem here. I, I, I'm a little harsh with my wife. He said, oh, now we're talking. Now I'm going to listen. Yeah, confess your harshness, confess your impatience, your criticalness, confess your blaming or your defensiveness, confess all this stuff that is not gentle. And you treat your wife with gentleness, respect. It's the way of a God marriage. She should get your best treatment. If anybody gets your best treatment, she should. Been more than one woman who has sold me. I just wish my husband would treat me as good as his clients. I mean, he's just, you know, trying to be a, a, a good salesman or whatever. And, and he treats those people so they see him as a man of respect and, you know, good approach with people. And she said, two of them, actually, I can picture them. I just wish my husband would treat me as well as he does his clients. Look at James chapter three. And there's two passages in here in James, two verses in James you can look at to close here. Who among you is wise and intelligent? Every one of you wants to be able to say, well, that's me. That's me. I'm, I'm, I'm wise and intelligent. Who among you is wise and intelligent? Let him by his good conduct show his good deeds with gentleness and humility of true wisdom. If you're really wise and intelligent, your life, your good deeds, how you express your faith in Christ and the wisdom he's given you will show in two things. You're gentle and you're humble. You're gentle and you're humble. I don't think it's uh, unusual that James, who was the brother of our Lord, remembers what Jesus said. For I am gentle and lowly of heart. Lowly is humble. So I'm gentle and hum humble of heart is what Jesus said. And if you're really wise, you're going to be two things, guys. You're going to be gentle and humble of heart. That's true wisdom. Gentleness is a sign of true wisdom. It's the way of the wise. And then James 3.17, a few verses later, it says this. But wisdom that is from above, wisdom that comes from God. Look at what it says. This is the nature of true wisdom. It, first of all, is pure. Well, that messes with us in recovery, doesn't it? If you're really wise, true wisdom from above, when you get God's wisdom coming down on you, the very first thing that happens it's pure. And then it goes on. It's peace loving. It's gentle at all times, willing to yield to others. Notice how peace loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others is all about how you approach other people. That when God's wisdom comes down on you, how you approach other people is clearly different. This wisdom from above is full of mercy, graciousness. 
and, and, and the fruit of good deeds. You're going to treat people well and do good things for them. It shows no faith favoritism. In other words, favoring one person over another and is always sincere. Wow. Those eight characteristics given here of godly discrimination, uh, godly wisdom is pretty cool. Pure, peace-loving, gentle at all times, willing to yield, full of mercy, full of good deeds, no favoritism, always sincere. Wow, powerful. But it says it again, gentle at all times. You can't deny that gentleness with others is what we're called to be. It's the sign that God has got a hold of your life. So I'll do a little bit of summarizing now as we looked at all those scriptures on gentleness. Gentleness. Are you a gentleman? Are you a gentle man? The path of gentleness seems to be this. You lead with humility. You pack your pride. A proud man will not be a gentle man because he'll have a right to say what he wants. He'll have a right to be treated different. He'll, he'll be defensive, right? But you lead with humility if you're gentle. You lead with self-denial. You really are putting other first because if I'm being kind, I'm putting you over me. I, I'm wanting what's best for you. I mean, it's, it's, it's denying myself and really loving you. Thirdly, if, if I'm going to be evident of the path of gentleness, I'm going to lead with tenderness. It's actually the soft approach. You know, when people ramp up more, you quiet down more. You're not going to be bombastic. You're not going to be reactive. You're not going to be defensive. You're going to listen. You're going to have a soft approach. So humility, self-denial, tenderness, and finally, you lead with kindness. You possess a caring heart. You want what's best for them. Kindness. Kindness. What can I do for you? How can I help here? Uh, I appreciate you. Uh, kindness. So, so the path of gentleness is this humility, self-denial, tender, kind approach. That's gentleness. At least in three of the verses, the pervasiveness of gentleness is unquestionable. Let your gentleness be evident to all. It's gentle at all times. It's, it's gentle to everyone in every way. It's pervasive, and it clearly includes our spouse. So in our recovery, in our marriage, in our recovery, in our uh, pursuit of integrity and purity, gentleness to my partner is clearly part of the game. Here's the power of gentleness. Gentleness transforms the relationship. Remember, it turns away wrath. Gentleness causes the other one to feel safe. Just recently uh, in a discussion with uh, husband and wife, I described the fact that one of the goals he should have is that he should be a safe harbor. If, if, if my hand here is, is, is like a harbor and the wife is this boat, I understand that, that, that the husband needs to be a safe harbor, that she can come here and just moor there in his safe arbor and be safe, be encouraged, be loved, be treated well. That, that, but many women come towards their husband and they veer off because I ain't going to moor there. I'll just get trashed. I'll just get hurt. I'll just get picked on. I'll just get criticized. I'll just get blamed. He'll just be defensive. He'll just be harsh. He'll just be angry. I'm afraid of him and not a safe harbor. You see, see, when I'm gentle, it causes people to be safe, feel safe, spouse included. Gentleness is fully other-centered. It's caring about how you treat people and how you come across both. You see, see, so that's why I said it displays great care and great regard. Great regard is wanting their best. I want the best for you. And how I do this is with the great care. Gentleness always wants their best every time. Gentleness never leads to greater battles and big reactions. Gentleness displays great self-control and awareness. Remember, it said, put on gentleness. Put it on. Like I put on this, this jacket today. Put it on. 
and gentleness fully respects Jesus, who himself, describing his own heart, said, I am gentle and humble of heart. I am come to me because I'm your safe harbor. You can come to me because I am gentle and humble of heart. And when you are gentle, you fully represent Jesus. I did a little work last night. Uh, what are some of the opposite things of gentleness? Because gentleness is kind of a comprehensive word. And so here's the top 40 I came up with. And I want you to start thinking about which ones you display more often rather than gentleness. So just listen to these. Uh, we'll work across every line. Harsh, angry, rough, impatient, violent, severe, opinionated, defensive, unforgiving, exasperated, inconsiderate, thoughtless, meanness, spiteful, unkindness, oppressive, uncaring, brash, nasty, grouchy, insensitive, brazen, rude, impolite, proud, pushy, arrogant, hard-hearted, quarrelsome, hateful, condescending, disrespectful, have to be right, disagreeable, unpleasant, punishing, callous, cruel, sternness, and gruff. Well, there's a feel for the opposite of gentleness. My question today, gentlemen, gentlemen, I call you gentlemen all the time. I mean, if you look at the talk of so many of the talks, I say, good morning, gentlemen. It's so good to be on this call with you guys. Um, I want to be able to call you gentlemen, not just gentlemen. I want to be able to call you men who are gentle, men who respond to others in a way that is kind and gracious and caring. What is God asking you to do, especially in your close circles? And if you're married, especially with your wife, are you a safe harbor for her of gentleness? That's my challenge for you today, man. That's my challenge for you today, that you would become a gentle man.